Uh, Mr. Kimley, Professor Kimley, to you guys. Uh, thank you very much for organizing this. Really, really, really appreciate it. Um, uh, my name is Boris Shransky. I'm with the Iowa Hemp Association. Uh, I'm, I'm in this room full of college students. Uh, I don't want to make assumptions. As everybody know, that there's a difference between hemp and marijuana. Hemp is just a classification of that same cannabis plant that has less than 0.3% THC, even in large quantities, it couldn't have any psychotropic effect on it. Uh, so basically, hemp has been used throughout history. Its, it's use for humans originated back in China. Uh, it spread west through India, the Middle East, uh, on into Europe. Uh, and eventually, it got into North and South America, and it was used for a variety of reasons. And hemp fiber had an amazing quality that it would not uh, deteriorate from the salt water. So it was able to be used as sails, it was able to be used as cordage and ton um, tonnage of rope on the ships. The colonies actually depended on hemp. Uh, the crown, when we were still uh, answering to Great Britain, uh, forced us to grow hemp. Uh, you could pay your taxes in hemp. Uh, it was actually illegal for a time in the colonies not to grow hemp. The United States was one of the largest producers of hemp. The reason that went down is because the cotton gin was invented in the middle of the 19th century, making the processing of cotton much less labor intensive, while the processing of hemp continued to be very labor intensive. Uh, some of our founders, George Washington planted hemp on his plantation. Um, Thomas Jefferson was very uh, famous saying, hemp is a first necessity to the wealth and protection of any country. Now, at some point, hemp and marijuana kind of parted ways, and that sort of started happening at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, with the migration of workers from the south, a lot of them came up and they were actually smoking marijuana, smoking cannabis, and that was something that we've never seen before here. Uh, medical cannabis tinctures were available in some pharmacies. Uh, in fact, uh, cannabis was actually in the U.S. pharmacopoeia as early as 1850, uh, but it was never known as marijuana. It was never known as anything like a smokeable form. It was something that you could find in the pharmacy or something that was grown on a large scale and, and processed into a variety of different materials. Of uh, the rhetoric surrounding the making this plant illegal centered on very, very racist rhetoric. There was another side of the cannabis plant that not many people were talking about and nobody really realized that was the same thing as this marijuana menace, and that was hemp. Uh, in the 1930s, this industrial cannabis Ford Motor Company, actually, Henry Ford developed the first bioplastic car, and he actually developed his own methanol plant at Iron Mountain in Michigan, and he created the first green car back in the 1930s that was running on methanol. Uh, he wanted to show that we could get away from fossil fuels, that we could do a renewable resource that could power um, industry, that could create cars, and we didn't have to sort of rely on fossil fuels. And unfortunately, in 1937, we had the Marijuana Tax Act, which instead of distinguishing between industrial uses of hemp and maybe the medical or recreational uses of hemp, uh, just lumped everything into one, <coughs> one bill and made everything illegal. That is until World War II. Uh, the Japanese took over the Philippines. And the Philippines were the number one exporter of hemp to the United States for us to actually create our soldiers' uniforms and anything from the shoes and the shoelaces, the parachute lubricant, hemp seed oil was an engine oil lubricant. So all of these things were used in World War II during the war effort. When we lost our supply of manila hemp, we had to start growing it here. So Iowa actually grew in 1943. You can see a hemp a war crop for Iowa. We grew 48,000 acres of industrial hemp here. Uh, prohibition, the 1937 law actually was found to be unconstitutional, and we ended up uh, with what we have today, which is the Controlled Substances Act. And again, instead of distinguishing between the industrial uses and the recreational medical uses of uh, cannabis, everything was lumped together, and hemp again fall, fell into the same drug classification as instead of actually falling under the auspices of a Department of Agriculture or under you know, whatever controls corn and soy and wheat, it didn't fall under those uh, government regulations. It fell under the drug regulations, under the DEA, under, and uh, potentially under the FDA, unfortunately, even though hemp doesn't belong there. The Federal Farm Bill in 2014 had a section called 7606, which allowed for industrial hemp to be grown in those states that passed legislation which allow it to be grown. Um, so as part of research projects, that's how Kentucky was growing hemp for the last few seasons, uh, they passed legislation in line with that federal legislation, and now they have test plots, they're developing processing technologies, and they're growing their hemp industry there. In Colorado, they actually passed it first as a fire remediation project, and then it was also part of the same bill that legalized marijuana in Colorado, also legalized the production and commercialization of industrial hemp. 
except for industrial hemp falls under the Department of Agriculture and is certified to be less than 0.3% THC.